Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately, you're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 227 and today is our lesson number 101. Actually the problem that I'm going to solve in all reality is not the one that you find on page number 227 but a problem similar to it that you will find in this book that I'm holding in my hand here. It says preparing to take the GRE general test the 10th edition. This book is based on the old format of the exam even though it is based on the old format of the exam the so-called new exam more than half the material in the, uh, the format of the exam has not changed. The multiple choice questions are still there the quantitative comparison questions are still there and so are the graph questions. So if you're looking for material to practice more, if you're looking for additional material to, to, for, to, to practice, this is an excellent source. Look for it. Again, practicing to take the GRE, General Test, 10th edition. And the problem that I'm about to solve is the one is, is, is out of this book here. You're going to find it on page number 328 out of this book here, 10E for the 10th edition. Just type in this tag if you want to watch the video that I did. Uh, <coughs> based on the question from the here, just, just type in GRE math as opposed to revised GRE. It just says re GRE math, not revised GRE math. GRE math, day 129, page 328, 10E for the 10th edition, it will pop right up. Let's take a look at it. The, this One more time, the book contains, this book that I'm holding in my hand, contains seven exams. Each exam has two sections, two math sections. And each math section has 15 quantitative comparison questions. Fifteen quantitative comparison questions. Altogether, 30 times 7, 210 quantitative comparison questions you will find in this book. And I have solved every single one of those 210 quantitative comparison questions. You will find them on my channel if you're interested, as I said, to practice more. Let's take a look at it. What's going on here is this. The question is right here. I have put it. The question is right here. It says, in column A, we are given twice the sum of the roots. That's what it says. Twice the sum of the roots of x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0 versus 6. That's it. That's all. And we, our job, of course, is to figure out which quantity is bigger or if they are equal. Let's find out, shall we? What does root mean? Root of an equation, as I explained to you before, on the previous days, this is probably our, this is our second or third day that, we, that we've been doing this factorization. Root means the solution to the equation. For example, if it were a linear equation, for example, if I tell you linear equation x plus 1 equals 7, well, the root of this equation, root of this equation is very simple, it's 6, because 6 plus 1 equals 7, and 6 is called the root. Root just means solution. Can you tell me the root of this equation? x squared equals 9. Because it's a quadratic equation, it has a second power, it has two roots. In other words, there are two values of x which will satisfy this equation. x can be positive 3, positive 3 squared equals 9, or x could be negative 3, negative 3 squared equals 9. And therefore, we'll write, we'll write it as x equals positive or negative 3. That's how we write it. Positive or negative 3. These are the two roots of this equation. Our job is to figure out the roots of this equation. There are two of them, obviously, because it's a quadratic equation. Let's find out, shall we? And there are two ways we can go about it. One is to use the quadratic formula. Another method that one can employ to find the roots of a quadratic equation is to use a method called factorization, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to find factors uh, that work for, to, uh, that, that help us find the roots of this equation. So here's the equation x squared minus 3x 
plus 2 equals 0. And here's how, here's how we go about finding the roots. We're looking for two numbers. We're looking for two numbers. Two numbers which add up to add up to negative 3 right here. They add up to negative 3 and and whose product is positive 2. And, and technically what it is is the whose product is this one has a this one has a coefficient of 1. So whose product is 1 times 1 right here 1 times 2 which of course is just 2. This is the tricky part. This is the most this is the hurdle that most people have trouble uh, getting over. Once you figure out what those two numbers are the rest is easy. What I want you to do now for those of you who are having a little bit trouble with this thing is to pause the video and think of those two numbers. Think, think of two, two such numbers. One more time. Think of two such numbers which add up to negative 3 and when you multiply them you get a positive 2. Can you think of those two numbers? I'll give you five seconds to so pause and unpause if you like. The two numbers are here's the two. They have, their product has to be two. Their product has to be two and their sum has to be negative three. And the two numbers are negative two and negative one. Negative one, negative one times negative two equals positive 2. And if you were to add them, negative 2 plus a negative 1, they add up to negative 3. Voila! They add up to negative 3, which is this part right here. And their product, their product is positive 2. That's it. We found the two numbers. Those are the numbers that we're looking for. We're going to break up this 3x, this negative 3x, we're going to break it up into negative 2x and a negative x. And then from that point on, will start our process. So let's do it, shall we? So, here's the, so we're gonna, we don't need this one here. x squared minus 3x now, minus 3x, minus 3x will be written as minus 2x and a minus x. Because minus 2x and a minus x gives us a minus 3x, and when you multiply negative 2x with a negative x, we get positive 2x squared, positive 2x squared, which is what we get here, 2 times x squared, 2x squared. That's it. I need the room and I don't want to make it too crowded, so I'm going to erase this bit. That's it, we're done with this part. So, now look at these two factors here, these two, these two terms are the nut factors. Look at these two terms here and tell me, do you find anything common in them? Is there any common factor in these two terms, which is why it's called factorization. The common factor here is, I see an x squared, I see an x, x is a common factor. Let's take it out. Let's take x co common. If you take out x outside, if you take x common, what is left from this term? What is, what is left is just an x, because x times x equals x squared. Minus, this minus sign right here, a 2. Why 2? Because a negative 2 times the x is going to give us a negative 2x. Now we're going to look at these two. Do you find anything common here between negative x and a positive 2? Between negative x and a positive 2, there is nothing common. There is nothing common at all. So what do we write? We write simply as a 1. When there is nothing common between the two numbers, two quantities, then, then, then in theory what is common between the common factor that they share, the factor that they share is 1. What is the common factor of 7 and 13? Well, 7 and 13 has nothing in common except 1. Of course, 1 is a factor of every number. So in theory, they share a common factor of 1 and nothing other than that. So we take out the uh, 1. And then inside we are left with, ah, actually I was wrong here. You see, if we take out positive 1, then what will be left here is negative x and a positive 2, which is not the same as this guy here. So what we need to take out here is, this is a tricky bit, you see. What we need to take out here is, not a positive 1, but a negative 1. If we take out the negative 1, as a common factor, then this x becomes positive. 
You see negative 1, a negative 1 times x is going to give us our negative x right here. And similarly, a negative 1 times a positive 2 is going to give us our negative 2. Sorry, this will become negative 1 because we need a positive 2. We need a positive 2, which is the whole point because we want this quantity in this parenthesis. Let me let me put a red marker underneath it. We want this quantity, x minus 2, this quantity right here, to be same as this one. So that we can take that out. So that's it. So the, here the common factor is negative 1. One more time, because negative 1 times x gives us our negative x. And negative 1 times negative 2, negative 1 times negative 2, negative 1 times negative 2 gives us the positive 2 which is right here. Now we concentrate on these two bits, this part and that part. They have, they share the common factor that they have is this part right here, x minus 2 and x minus 2. The fact that this x has a positive in front of it, it doesn't really do anything. Of course if there's not no sign there it has a positive. So let's take out x minus 2 common x minus 2 comes out common and here what we're left here is with x from the first part here because x minus 2 x minus 2 times x is going to give us here x times x minus 2 minus a 1 and minus minus negative 1 times x minus 2 is going to give us this quantity right here and of course this whole thing equals to 0 now, when two quantity, when the product of two quantity equals zero, if if you're told, if I'm told, if I'm told that a times b equals zero, there are two or three possibilities. One is that either either a is equal to zero, or b is equal to zero, or they are both equal to zero. So here, x minus two, this quantity here, x minus two times x minus one we are told equals 0, which implies, which implies that either x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. And if this were the case, x minus 2 equals 0, then x must equal positive 2. Or, if this were the case, then x must equal positive 1. There we go, those are the roots. Those are the roots, positive 2 and positive 1. And how will we know that those are the roots? Because we're going to verify it. We're going to make sure that we did not make a boo-boo. We did not make a mistake. We're going to verify it. We're going to put it back in our original equation. And we'll see if it satisfies the equation. To satisfy an equation means that it works. So let's put two, let's two, let's put two in here. Okay, I'm not going to write everything. Just listen to me. 2 squared, x squared, which is same as 2 now. 2, we're replacing x with 2. 2 squared which is 4 minus 3 times 2 which is 6 4 minus a 6 is a negative 2 a negative 2 and a positive 2 equals 0 you see similarly if you were to put 1 in there 1 squared is 1 negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 negative 3 and so what we end up here is if you put it put in 1 there we end up with with a 1 negative 3 and a positive 2 you see a positive 2 a positive 2 and a positive 1 it's positive 3 and a negative 3 equals 0. So it works. Those are the right roots. Those are the correct roots. We verified it and it works. We're not done yet. We have to answer this question. The question is which quantity is bigger? Twice the sum of the roots of this equation or 6? Let's find out. So I need the room here. So we're going to continue our work here. The sum of the roots, sum of the roots, is 2 plus 1 positive 2 plus a positive 1 which is 3 twice the sum of the roots twice the sum of the roots twice the sum of the roots would be this is the sum of the roots twice the sum of the roots would be 2 times 3 which of course is 6 which is same as this 6 therefore the answer is C answer to this problem is C yes you're right this was a hard question this appeared in the exam as hard question. The problem that you see there on page number 227, uh, 
It's not considered to be a, a straightforward, simple question. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard question. You have to know how to factorize or you have to know the quadratic formula, one or the other. That was it. We are done here. What I'm going to do tomorrow and day after tomorrow on day number 102 and 103 is do two more problems like this so that you can get a little bit more practice. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.